What is going on everybody? We have a 22 F350 and I want to go over something that goes with the 4x4 and if your 4x4 doesn't work I want you guys to pay attention because I'm going to show you a way to check your 4x4 using this vacuum gauge. Very simple and you guys should follow along. Alright guys, let's check your 4x4. guys welcome back to the channel thanks so much for checking us out make sure to hit that like and subscribe right here at the bottom yes we have a new vehicle and I'm using this as a test victim this is my co-worker if you guys remember the King Ranch video I did where we did the PDI process on it this is his truck he actually got rid of it and got a different one so without further ado, I want to talk about 4x4 and how you guys check it. Now, we have two ways that we can use our 4x4. Now, if you have the electronic shift on the fly, that means you have the knob on the dash. That means you're going to leave this in auto, automatic. This is automatically going to go into 4x4 once you use that switch. Let's say your 4x4 does not work. You cannot automatically get your 4x4 to shift into 4x4. You cannot get your truck to automatically shift into 4x4, so you either have a vacuum problem uh, or you have a module problem or some type of electrical fault going on. If you were to put this down in lock, go ahead and put it down and lock that right there is going to lock your axle shaft to your hub okay so we know those two are connected now if we leave this in auto and go ahead and turn our wheel until this spins far enough we'll actually release see how it released and it is no longer coupled to the hub. Now, one of the things that happen when you go to hit an auto and you are selected in 4x4 and you have this. Customer complaints, 4x4 in up, selects the 4x4 switch knob on the dash and this is an auto and we have no 4x4. What are you gonna check? What are your first things you're gonna check? Obviously visual inspection, make sure all the vacuum lines and everything are connected and make sure the hub lockout, which is what you guys just saw here is functioning correctly. Well, one of the next things that you can do is actually check vacuum at the hub. And that is what I'm gonna show you here. Uh, just my little gauge just popped off now. All right, so let's see. We're gonna take this line off of the vacuum port going to the knuckle. And this is gonna be the same for uh, pretty much all Super Duties, uh, even back to the 6.0 days and uh, 7.3. Seals are different, tools are different, but the concept and everything is the same. I'm gonna need two hands for this. All right, two-handed, we got it off. And I have in that vacuum pump kit a line and a bunch of adapters that you can safely plug on to whatever nipple or uh, port that you wanna go to. So we're gonna get this guy and plug it in to the other end of the pump. And I'm going to suck it down like so. But first, what I want you to note is this wheel is spinning freely. Okay, so customer complaint 4x4 does not engage. We verified the concern, but we need to check. Do we have an electronic problem? Do we have a vacuum problem? Well, if we had a vacuum problem, we would expect to see this right here. The wheel spinning and no axle shaft movement. Well, right now, I have it in auto. I am manually gonna give it vacuum, so I am checking everything 
from the knuckle out to the wheel end. So if this is not getting vacuum, I'm gonna be going from my vacuum lines and the supply and the solenoid up top behind the degas bottle. If you guys saw me replace that hydro boost on that ambulance, you guys saw in the location where all these four by four solenoids and vacuum lines are. So underneath the truck, I am gonna pump this up to about, about 10 inches. We're gonna go nice and easy. Go up to 10, and we are gonna let it hold. So right now, right off the rip, we're testing this customer's truck and we can verify that the hub, the knuckle, the wheel bearing, the hub seal, the front hub lockout, everything is sealed. And now what I would expect is if I turn this tire, we are gonna see this axle shaft move. All right, let's do it. Boom, look at that engagement. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to spin this as fast as I can and I'm gonna release the vacuum on it and see if we can get that axle shaft to stop spinning all in one motion. Here we go, just like the spinning wheel on The Price is Right. Bob, this is for you. Releasing vacuum. Oh, couldn't get it fast enough. There we go not spinning anymore. So that tells me right here that we have good vacuum going through our knuckle and to the wheel bearing, to our four x four hub lockout. So the customer's complaint, four x four not working, I would be very suspicious is if we have a vacuum leak somewhere upstairs or a vacuum supply issue from those solenoids. And since we're here talking about it, this is gonna be the same procedure for the passenger side, but if we have an issue farther upstairs, I wanna go and show you exactly where those vacuum lines and solenoid. All right, here we are underneath the hood and behind the degas bottle. You guys can see all these vacuum lines and we have a little solenoid here. This is for a four x four. And a lot of the vacuum supply area is gonna be coming, not a lot of the vacuum equipment in this area is gonna be coming from the vacuum pump that mounts in the front of Z motor right there. So we have a reservoir that is pretty much the bottom of the degas bottle. That is where that chamber is. And then we have some lines that are gonna go to our brake booster because this has a vacuum brake booster. Remember those two different types that we talked about? And if you had a vacuum supply issue, this is where I'd want you to start checking all these vacuum lines. However, there's multiple reasons why your 4x4 could not work. You could have an electrical problem with the axle switch, the transfer case control module, the shift motor on the transfer case, uh, or you could have a vacuum issue, which what I was trying to illustrate to you guys today and how to check using that vacuum gauge. I want you guys to tell me in the comments, I'm gonna be monitoring closely and I want you to tell me how you are checking your 4x4, whether or not you're doing it with the vacuum pump, such as you saw as I did here. Here, or if you got some slick, cool, alien way that I've never heard of, I'd be curious to see how you're doing it. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section. Remember to like, comment, sub, share, and I will catch you guys all next time, probably underneath the hood of Super Duty. I'll see you guys later. SMS.